Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie, with a coffee. And here we are, we're going to look at the second part of the Peter Folding question and answer interview that he did with Luke from Bra uh, Break the Ice Channel. Just like the first part, it's not hating on Peter, it's not hating on Luke, it's just me watching it with you, if you like saying what I think about it and uh, then you make your own mind up about what's true, what isn't true, what you find um, logical about it, what you find a bit strange about it. You know, that's for you. I'm not the thought police. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just presenting my thoughts, presenting this question and answer, which was a public question and answer that people got involved in. Uh, and many people supported uh, in various ways, including financially, and then completely disappeared. So I don't feel bad showing it. Um, you know, this interview was made to be aired publicly so that we could all, you know, have uh, a look at what the what the reasons are for Peter and his actions um, since the College of Policing review. And also, he was telling us about his version of what happened. So, we're going to look, we're going to take it from exactly where we finished in part one. And, um, let's just grab full screen. So, yeah, I'm just going to play the video and every now and again, if I think it's something that I want to comment on, I'll, I'll just stop it and comment. Right, now this is another question people, a lot of people have asked, and it is, why were you digging in the woods if you knew Nicola was in the river? Right. Yeah, now he seems to think this is funny, but this was a very relevant question, I think, because this is a question that a lot of people have had, because as we know, Peter, and if Peter, if you're watching, you cannot deny that you did say categorically many, 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 many times that she was not in the river, and this is what, as, as and you, if you like it, has hurt people, it hurt me, because I, I took everything that Peter said, I trusted him implicitly, it didn't even occur to me that the you know this revelation this bombshell that came out i think it was the same for all of us it was a complete bombshell and then what came out in the college of police in review was that peter uh you know went off and was digging in places so yeah it's a very relevant question why did he do that why did he do that if as he says uh, he had found Nicola within six minutes. These are the things that don't add up for people. Whether you, you know, it, it's not a question of um, trying to do Peter down. It's a question of it doesn't make sense. Okay, this is this is a great one. This made me chuckle actually. This uh, the report made me chuckle on this one, and my team as well. Right, I wasn't digging in the woods. I want to. I've got some photos that I want to show you. Uh, which is quite interesting. So on the 8th, on Thursday, sorry, Wednesday, the 8th of February, 2023, um, I went for a walk with um, one of the family friends around and I was ex that was when I threw the stick in the river. Now, what people need to realise is I get involved in specialist land oh, search yes, and I've been for years I finding buried know. human oh. remains. Um, I have done training with the Forensic Science Service. I'm qualified. I work with top forensic archaeologists like Dr. Carl Harrison, Lucy Syburn from University College London. So my job is to find, I would find either using ground radar or through my naked eye looking at visual search like I'm working on the Helen McCourt with trying to help mum of Helen at the moment and Marie McCourt. And I had, I was... Uh, yeah, just want to say there, that case is a very sad case. It's lovely that he is trying to help um, find Helen McCourt. Helen McCourt was a young girl that went missing quite a few years ago, quite a long time ago now. And um, it's believed, uh, her, 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 who was believed to be a murderer, the guy that was the landlord of the local pub, and um, he was prosecuted 
and he did serve he did die in prison actually he, he, he i say unfortunately he's no longer with us it is unfortunate because he never told where he uh buried uh helen's body and so it is lovely that he's helping uh with her with marie because that's the mother you know her life's goal she's getting on in years now and her life's goal is to find her bring her daughter's remains and home and give them a dignified burial doesn't look very likely that it's going to happen but peter you know you never know peter so he's been helping out so that's uh, let's hope for some resolution there asking what had been done to to the friends and we were just walking along and i walked into wood i'll show you the photo i want you to see this because i'm not misleading anyone this is a tree stump now can you see that hold it there right hang on let me try this see that tree stump yeah Got it? we can all see that yeah yeah okay give us a thumbs up if you can see it okay so at the bottom of the tree stump there is lots of there's some odd bits of I would say camouflage. Can you see it doesn't match? Get it a bit closer to the camera, Peter, please. A bit higher. There we go. Right. Now, if you talk now. So that all that debris laying in the front is in a very odd place to me, you see. So to my training, my eye, this is what I find. I find things. So that there, can you see it? It's very... Um, it, it doesn't look right. It's it then that that type of debris shouldn't be in front of that tree stump. Okay? Yeah, it does look it does look weird to be fair. Is weird. So I other people probably wouldn't notice it, but I notice things like that. So that's what I'm looking now. So what I did, I was actually with this is witnessed by a family friend. <clears throat> so I then got a co colleague, and I thought my colleague was not far away. There was no police officers nearby. And I said, Lee, can you just get me a stick? And I, I didn't have my trowel with me, which I normally have. I said, something's not right. Sorry, I just want to say something. It's funny that none of the, like you mentioned, the family friend again, which I'm presuming was Emma, but it may not have been. Um, why have nobody has spoken up in support of Peter, have they? As far as I know, anyway, if I'm wrong there, please let me know. The family haven't spoken up in support of what he's saying. So that's quite strange to me. In fact, they were quite scathing about him, weren't they? So I scraped away the top. I photographed it as well. I did the right thing. I had gloves on. And I actually photographed this area. And then I started scraping away, which I would do on any job. And, and, and this is where I work with the archaeologist. Now, let me make it clear. A forensic archaeologist will excavate, excuse me, a body their job is to dig up the evidence and they would then do that if something is found but what we're going to do is ring a forensic archaeologist in straight away to look at a bit of debris here so i that's what i do and then so the problem here you can see it he's saying oh that's what i do but he was not brought in by the police this is the whole problem he was he was not if he's brought in by the police and he's tasked to do a certain thing but he was not brought in by the police he was brought in by the family and it'd be just like if you really just like if you or i saw something that we thought was suspicious you're not really supposed to go off and um investigate it yourself are you you know that, so really what you should have done um and you should have i think the police are right in that if he saw something that was suspicious he should have told the police and uh, let the police check it out. But, uh, you know, he, he's probably been on so many cases, etc. Maybe he was forgetting that this time he was called in by the family, not the police. And actually, there was a little bit of a, you know, there was this sort of almost a resentment. You know, I don't think the police didn't want him there. They didn't want him there. Uh, they said that in the College of Police in review. But they felt that the family said, that if they didn't allow him to come and help, uh, they would release a negative press statement. So the police's hands were tied up to a point. They didn't want him there, but they brought him in because they were almost sort of blackmailed into it, really. Now, you know, I appreciate Peter was trying to help, um, 
but you know he shouldn't have been digging around that what you know whatever he shouldn't have even because that can compromise a crime scene as well what if he would have found nicola buried under there what would when it came to court you know if they thought they found out who did it and they took them to court first thing their lawyer's going to say is oh well that uh pete's folding guy he, he you know his dna will be all over it or you know he tampered with it or you know so you and it, I, I only know those kind of things because I watch a lot of true crime. Peter has been involved in these things, so he should have known better than that. Um, so although I appreciate that he was try well, trying to find Nicola, but he already found her by then, hadn't he? But, um, you know, he, sh he, he shouldn't have done it. And sh to be honest, he started laughing when Luke asked him about it. He said it makes him chuckle. It's not really funny, is it? But anyway, uh, he, I think he tried to sort of do, he did try to do things that weren't in his remit to do. Uh, for the best intentions, don't get me wrong, for the best intentions. But, the, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, isn't it? This is where people say, um, you know, you're not trained to that. I do, I do a lot of this. So then what I've done, I scraped away. OK, not with a gigantic shovel. Pete, what? just pull that back slightly. There. Leave it. There. Come forward a bit. It, do you see what I'm saying? You shouldn't have done that because he is tampering with a potential crime scene. Right, leave it there. We can all see that. Yeah, OK. OK, so what I've done, <clears throat> I scraped that bit away with a... With a, with a um, a, a, a sharp stick, okay? And I was outlining, so this ground had been disturbed, it had been dug, it be previously, and I was removing lo loose soil to outline the actual thing. And those who look at my, you know, SG, our SGI Facebook or my Peter Folding Facebook, um, the author one, you'll see it. And that, what me working on a garden, working on a, a body I found under a path, okay? Now, so that's what I do. So that's it. That's the hole. Now, I was in the report. I said, I dug a hole with a spade. No, I didn't. That's what I did. <clears throat> and then a police officer walked over and he said, get away from there. And I said, sorry, really aggressively towards me. And I mean, really aggressive. Get away. Leave it alone. I said, well, I'm sorry, but I found disturbed ground. It's not your job. Now, what I want to make it clear, this firstly this area is not a crime scene. Yeah, but it still is not your job, Peter. So I do agree with the police. He shouldn't have been aggressive if, if he were, you know, if he was aggressive as Peter says he was aggressive. He shouldn't have been aggressive. Of course he shouldn't. But he, he, he probably, you know, I, I do feel there was a build up of. Don't you get that impression? Don't you? there was no love lost between uh, Peter and this police force for whatever reason. And the policeman was right. It's not his job to do it. I, I don't, I'm surprised at Peter. And he's not even really admitting that it wasn't his job. He's going to go on now and say it wasn't cordoned off, which it wasn't cordoned off. But, um, hmm. In fact, none of the area was taped off. So it's public land. I can dig exactly where I want, OK? I want to make that very clear. And that's what I've spoken to police officers about in the last few weeks. You know, they've all agreed. I can dig exactly where I want. That's a little bit, um, you know, no, you can't, because I know it hadn't been cordoned off, and that was a mistake. I think that's the, the, the fundamental mistake, isn't it, that the police made. But, Peter, again, Peter has worked with the police for long enough to know he can't just go off and do what he wants. Um even if he would have gone to them and said, oh, look, I'm just going to go and have a look. Is it OK if I just go and have a look for disturbed ground? He didn't. He took himself, he took it upon himself. Uh, and I don't think that was the right thing to do, personally, in my opinion. And maybe it might be better if he just admitted that he shouldn't have done it. But he's not, is he? If you haven't got a crime scene log, so when you go in, so when there's a crime scene, it's taped off. And there's an officer on there and he'll have a crime scene log. So when I go in in my forensic suit normally and my hood up and my mask and everything else, you'll see pictures of me online, fully gloved up. Then I sign a crime. The officer will sign me in, Peter Folding, SGI, 
and then I can go into the scene. It's like a, it's a go, no go. You can't go in unless you're meant to be there. Okay. Now, this was not a crime scene. It wasn't taped off. So I was actually breaking no rules. I was, I was just found something that needed further investigation. And that's all I did. Again, I scraped that hole out. They've accused me of digging with a shovel. And then I said, that this needs looking at. Leave, fill it back in. Now, normally, you wouldn't say fill it back in. You would say, right, thanks for that, Peter. We'll get it taped off. Or if there's another reason, <clears throat> in the priest, they talk about technical things, which I'm not going to go into, but they would just brief me on it. And they would say, there's a reason, so just walk away and leave it. But they didn't. OK, so I've broken no rules. And then they accuse me of telling the. So he's saying they should and maybe they should just said, look, there's a, now you said all these technical things that I'm not going to go into. You know, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I do feel like there's more in this case going on. I think I think Peter's uh, influence in this case was misleading for other things. But anyway. He's right. They should. They could have just said to him, "Look, you know, there's a reason why not to uh, dig here, or there's a reason why not to scrape away." He says he didn't dig; that he scraped everything away. But um, I, I, honestly, I do feel that he should have known a bit better than that. But um, it all comes down to this: not uh, cordoning off the crime scene, doesn't it? You know, the crime scene, and uh, you know. Peter will have been, uh, for various reasons, including good ones, like to help the family, he would have been desperate to find Nicola. Everybody was desperate to find Nicola. And I think everybody would have liked to have been the one who helped. Everybody wanted to help. This is what I'm trying to say. So even the TikTokers, you know, that they complained about, they were trying to help. They were looking for Nicola. They were hoping... Uh, that they could find the clue, probably, that would find her. But I don't think Peter's any different to that. You know, you can criticise TikTokers, but what's the difference between what Peter did and what they did? No difference in my eyes. The family that I found a body deposition site. I would never say that to anybody, even if we're searching a river and I feel if I found a good target, I'm, I would explain, I'll explain to that a bit later. But... I said to them, because oh, oh, no, they weren't doing anything about it. Normally, the officer would make, a, 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 in his pocketbook, he would make notes of it. He would get on the radio or the phone, said, Peter's found something, or brief me to other reasons. So he is sort of uh, second-guessing the police there. He's saying, oh, what the police would normally do. But he was not in on the investigation. So he did not know what the police would normally do. And the police were under no obligation to share information with him because uh, he shouldn't have been there really as far as the police were concerned there's something more here I feel police didn't want to tell him things because he is not in that as much as he would have liked to have been in the you know in a circle he wasn't in this particular case he may have been in other cases but he wasn't in this case and he's trying to say they should have done it the way he thought they should have done it well they were doing it a different way and they did do things wrong of course they did i think the only good thing really that has come out of this is then when um, Gaynor Lord went missing and the, the police there in Norwich, they dealt with it so much better, didn't they? Because they had advice from Lancashire Police, not on how to do it, but how not to do it. So if it, at least hopefully it's uh, improved these sort of investigations. But I think it's very difficult with the police because uh, anywhere all over the world, there are often things, investigations going on they can't talk about them, you know. So sometimes it looks like they're withholding information or they're being inept or and not it's not always for that reason because you can't get to know what's going on behind the scenes, not even Peter Balding can. To say, please walk away from this area, there's a reason. And I would have gone. OK, I'm with you now. The police yeah. who are watching this will understand what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to go into it in public. So that's what I did. And then I, walk, I walked off then. And then at the end of the day, 
and he walked and that was that that was that was getting dark now and then he come up to me and just said you know has everything been all right for you here we treated you all okay i said well yeah i suppose so and i sort of i i, I knew I, I we weren't wanted anyway and that was the last conversation i had and that was the first time last time i heard from lancashire to be honest with you but and that was the last time you heard from him. There's obviously no love lost between him and Lancashire Police, which is interesting, really, isn't it? He said we knew we weren't wanted, but, you know, and he, he could be right. Maybe, you know, I'm not taking sides. I think, you know, I'm not taking sides on that. I think Lancashire Police did things wrong. But, um, yeah, he wasn't welcome. He probably, but to be fair, the night before he actually went up there, he had been on TV totally slagging off the police operation so it was never you know they were never going to greet him with open arms were they so um yeah, it's a very strange because all of all the cases that have happened you know over the years this one you know to have so much attention and to have um all this you know, is this normal that the police and um, specialist dive teams don't get on? Or is there more to this? Is there more going back from before the Nicola Bully case? You know, is there other things that generally between the police and Peter, um, you know, not just the Lancashire police, but have things happened before? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's why is this, you know, it seems like they were at odds against him, you know, as soon as he arrived and there's something some bad blood going on there so maybe something else has happened somewhere along the line that we don't know about on another case i want to make it clear this the report is very misleading i would not dig up to disturb a potential crime scene and it wasn't a crime scene so i want to clarify that and the beauty of this when i went to the college of police and review in london this whole conversation was recorded in front of two police officers and I had an ex senior, very senior officer with me as a witness on my side. Not that I need, a, I just want to take a witness with me and he saw everything. Everything's recorded and exactly what I've told you is exactly the same. And so that is a totally misleading statement to bash me in the report. I would never tell the family that there's a body deposition site. I thought it, yeah, strange, isn't it? I mean, he's saying he would never say it and we can take him at his word. But then, you know, that means what he's saying basically is the police have blatantly lied in that College of Policing report. So it just comes down to what you what you believe, really. And I know some of you out there will believe Peter. And, you know, I, I really, really am on the fence. I don't see why the police would say that. but. Um, you know, I don't see why Peter would say it either. So, you know, you pay your money, you take your choice, basically, as to what you believe. This is why, you know, the, of course, the family refused to take part in the, the well, declined to take part in the College of Police in review. So they would know, they would know whether Peter told them it was a body deposition site. He did say quite a few things on the TV about things like that. So, you know, you have to dig around, look for those interviews. They're probably still out there. He did make quite a few comments about what he thought had happened to Nicola when she was categorically not in the river. So that makes me a little bit wary of what he says. It may or could have been because at this time I'd already been told that Nicola, that target in the river was nothing. Yeah. I'd already been told it was nothing. So now I'm potentially looking for, I didn't think she was in the river. So I'm now looking for a deposition site. And as you will recall from my statements, I was going to go back the following week to start searching the land because yeah. it, it, it needed. Now, he also said in another interview, uh, she's definitely not in the river and I've got the data to prove it. So when did he look at this data again and say and decide oh no that's definitely it's so clear that the psychic said that she could see you know bottom feet head she, that psychic said she could see it as clear as day so i don't understand them when did that happen um you know <laughs> when did he look at that data 
and think, oh, my God, that's as clear as day. And then whereas Luke, uh, when he showed it, Luke, apparently he had to put, um, you know, actually draw something around it. So what, what I'm saying is what is the truth? Was it just a blur that was so unclear he had to actually put a circle around it so Luke could tell what it was? Or was it so clear, like Debbie the Psychic said, that she could see head, bottom, feet, you know? And I still have that video. <laughs> so it can't be both, can it? This is. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to badmouth anybody. I'm just saying the discrepancies which is the truth was it so uh was the image so murky uh, uh, a line had to be drawn around it so that luke could even make it out or was it so clear that debbie could see head bottom feet can't be both can it just want clarification then hopefully when the sonar images get sent to a proper professional you know eventually um maybe we'll see that it you know wherever she was you've got to because i noticed a lot of the area hadn't been beaten down normally you'd have strimmers out you would strim all the undergrowth back and you would cut everything back and do a search for evidence but that hadn't been done around there so that's why and and also they said that the area had already been searched well if it searched this area wouldn't have been camouflaged up but it, what I don't like is the blame focusing on me, totally misleading the public in the report, which is totally wrong. And that's yeah. why I'm here today. I want to correct a few truths. So I've got no notes written down. I'm telling you exactly as it is, which was witnessed by another member of my team who's given a statement to, to a very senior person in case this ever in the future we get called to some sort of inquiry. I just want to say that the, uh, the comments in the chat are very, That'll be interesting because he says that he's sending all that he's, he hasn't said he's sending anything to an expert. He says he's sending everything to the government, etc. You know, so it'll be interesting to see if a new inquiry is opened up, won't it? And then that'll we we'll see what happens there. Very, very positive and in your favour. There's a lot of support here tonight, Peter. So just Thank, you. To be aware Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. 99% of people that are here are very much in your favour and uh, very interested in, in what you're saying. So again, thank a lot you. of thank you for being here. Um, okay, next question. Now, do suicide victims do suicide victims end up in the fetal position in water generally? Well, they drown. They normally drown. I mean, yeah, they. Uh, we we had during COVID, we had three female suicides, unfortunately, very sad. And the ladies all put makeup on and they drank, you know, spirit and they took tablets. It's pretty horrendous, really. And um, the I I wasn't the diver on them. I was the I was I was on the um, them ones there. We didn't even have to sonar them three because we knew exactly where they were. So we just threw a diver in the water. Yeah, it's quite interesting that, isn't it? I've heard that before. So it's very rare to a, for a woman uh, to delete herself uh, well, naked, first of all, very rare. And they normally get dressed up. But, you know, that would definitely be me. Make sure I've got my lipstick on. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, and, you know, Peter's, what Peter's been doing for years, he's, he's, you know, since he started SGI, you know, it's an important job um you know i know i'm not dishing peter for his experience or for whatever just don't see this this you know why did he not say anything before anyway let's not go through all that let's just listen to what he's got to say um suicide victims drown i mean they drown themselves so yes they can end up in a in a fetal position but when i say a fetal they're not pulled their legs up to their chest let me make that very clear it's just the thing we use to say they're laying on their side with their legs slightly bent and again there's there's no exact way to go but often when a person drowns you can tell because they grab they grab something like their glasses and they're holding them still and it's pretty horrible to talk about but they tend to grab at things yeah it's called a death grip mm, yeah i think that might be too much information but um it's 
it's a horrible way i think to do it to yourself i know that uh, a lot of people do it that way but to me i, I just think it's awful to be honest oh what a death grip mm, um, yeah wow wow right moving on okay do you think she was placed did she fall or had an altercation in your opinion I can't. I'm never going to speculate about that. I mean, I don't think we'll ever know. And I don't want to think about that. It's I, I will never know, probably never know what's happened to Nicola. Um, she was, you know, she could have been pushed. She could have fallen. Nobody knows. And I don't want to start any speculation on that. I think the point is here is. Well, he did start a little bit of speculation when Nicola was missing by saying that he didn't think she was in the river and he thought he might have run off with someone. Anyway, no Why wasn't she found earlier? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, just what? Yeah, so he doesn't want to get into the case. That's not, he's only there. He's there to clear his name. That's what he's there for. Fair enough. A moment, slight technical issue now being recovered. Uh, do you did you understand why you weren't allowed to retrieve your target at the time? Did you understand the logic behind that? <clears throat> yeah, because I did. I did because it wasn't they, it, they had their own dive unit there, so they wouldn't want to use us at that stage. They would want to use their own dive unit, which is fair comment. Okay. Which was fair. I mean, they had their own underwater search unit, so they got their own divers. So why would they use another dive team when it's like if they were on our ground, it would be probably us who who dived. So it was it, that that was not a bad decision, by the way. That was their decision. It was their force dive team. The Northwest Underwater Search Unit covers North Wales, Greater Manchester, Cheshire, and and. Um, I think it's uh, Lancashire, so they cover yeah. like four areas, four counties, kind of four thing. counties. Yeah, so that that was, you know, I'm I'm, I'm not go saying anything on that. I mean, that was their area, and you know, they they come and dived. Fair, fair one. So basically, yeah. So, so it's sort of making me think as I'm seeing this. This whole problem really is because the family, whoever the you class as the family insisted on peter coming along the police did you know the police didn't want that strange that isn't it and then the the family at the um the statement after nicola had been found was scathing towards peter and supportive of the police so i'm just wondering why then in that first instance the family was so insistent that Peter should come along, um, even that you know at that time, the, the fact of bringing Peter along was like a bit of a slight towards the police. But by the time the police statement after Nicola had been found, Peter was like, according to the family, a so-called expert, and the police were great, have been really supportive. Blah de blah de blah. It's, a, it's quite a change of. Um, you know, a change of sort of the way the family, again, whoever the family are, the way they looked on things. You know, one minute Peter was the best thing since sliced bread, then he was the worst thing since sliced bread, and the police were back again in favour. So, you know, have people generally been played? Okay, moving on, question 15, and then we're going to have a break at 25. So, how deep was the water where you made your target discovery on the seventh of February? So, we on our on our sonar boat, the towfish was down about two meters, so it was probably two and a half, three meters deep. Because we didn't have a depth sound because it's an inshore boat, we don't have a depth sound on the back because it means a lot of wire. We don't need it because normally what we do, we find a target. And I can drop a plumb weight over the side on a bit of string and fill the bottom. Don't need it, you know, or we throw a diver in. I just throw a diver down, we'll plumb it and say it's brought, brought me six meters, or just lower the what we do normally is lower the towfish down, and the towfish cable is marked every meter. So when it goes down, we can count how many meters it's gone down, and we know how deep it is. On this one, it was more there's a target there. 
handed it straight to the police. We'd done a couple of more scans, gave it to the police and got out of their way because we we did not. And the other thing what we would normally do, we would normally drop a, a marker over the over the side. Now, that's why I want to make clear about this. So, right. If you imagine me sitting on the boat, you saw the pictures of me on the boat. I've got a computer, ruggedized laptop in, in a, like a housing, keeps it dry and keeps the sun. Hi, okay. Now, the GPS signal is being picked up from that yeah. computer. Now, GPS gives a, can give a fluctuation of up to five meters. Then the towfish oh. itself, what's retrieving oh. the signal from the thing, is a couple of meters. Sorry about the background noise. <laughs> that doing when I was recording this, that would be my dogs coming downstairs. That's interesting, isn't it? What he's, let's just go back and hear that again, what he says about the distance. He said that the area had already been searched. Well, if dive team, when it's like if they were on our ground, it would be probably us who who dived. So it was it, that that was not a bad decision, by the way. That was their decision. It was their force dive team. The Northwest Underwater Search Unit covers North Wales, Greater Manchester, Cheshire, and and um, I think it's uh, Lancashire. So they cover yeah. like four areas, four counties, kind of thing. four counties. Yeah. So. That that was you know I'm 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 not go saying anything on that. I mean that was their area, and you know they they come and dived. Fair fair one. Okay, moving on. Question fifteen, and then we're going to have a break at twenty five. So, how deep was the water where you made your target discovery on the seventh of February? So. We on our on our sonar boat, the towfish was down about two meters, so it was probably two and a half, three meters. So two and a half, three meters, he's saying down where he saw the the target. It was deep because we didn't have a depth sound because it's an inshore boat. We don't have a depth sound on the bank because it means a lot of wire. We don't need it because normally what we do, we find a target. And I can drop a plumb weight over the side on a bit of string and fill the bottom. Don't need it. You know, or we throw a diver in. I just throw a diver down. We're plumbing. So did he throw a plumb weight? It sounds like he didn't throw a plumb weight down or... Anyway. I can say it's probably six metres. Or just lower the... What we do normally is lower the towfish down. And the towfish cable is marked every metre. So when it goes down, we can count how many metres it's gone down. And we know how deep it is. On this one, it was more, there's a target there, handed it straight to the police. We'd done a couple of more scans, gave it to the police and got out of their way because we we did not. And the other thing what we would normally do, we would normally drop a, a marker over the, over the side. Yeah, so it's important to say that the police did say that they did uh, clear this target. You know, they did say that. I, I don't think there's any reason to think that the police are lying, that they didn't go down and check. Um, but, of course, it was a couple of hours later, so it, if, if that was indeed Nicola, uh, she may have moved by them because, you know, they do move, don't they, in the, uh, um, in the river, obviously. But, of course, they were still searching. So, you know, I think we all know it's not straightforward, even in a very small and slow-moving mo river like um, the River Wire. It's not it wouldn't be unheard of it for it to be difficult to find a body because you know it's very complex uh also they did because i noticed uh, in the um gainer lord case when they found a target which was very quick and don't forget that was the police you know they had they had their that, you know, the police have got good equipment. It's not about, you know, Emma mentioned that, didn't she, on a, a, an interview that she did. Oh, you know, it's not about whether Peter's got a better kit or the police have got better kit. So there'd obviously been some discussion there for her to bring it up. Um, you know, the police found Gaynor and they put a, a boy, didn't they? They, you know, you put a marker, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Uh, you, you know, because initially... You're going along with the uh, sonar and then you see the target, you put a marker and then the divers come after. The divers are not just sat on the bank like all 
togged up ready maybe they should be you know but you could be, end up sitting there all day couldn't you so then they have to get ready get the divers in you know so it takes a bit of time whatever you know uh, whatever's going on to in the in between finding a target and then the divers actually going in all right now that's what i want to make clear about this so right if you imagine me sitting on the boat you saw the pictures of me on the boat i've got a computer ruggedized laptop in in a, like a housing keeps it dry and keeps the sun Hi, okay. now the gps signal is being picked up from that yeah. computer now gps gives a can give a fluctuation of up to five meters and then the you know that's quite a lot isn't it he's saying that gps is very interesting that can give a fluctuation of up to five meters so five meters is is personally seems to me quite a lot but i suppose you know they take that into account when they dive the towfish itself what's retrieving the signal from the thing is a couple of meters back on the boat so one and a half probably one to two meters at the back so that's six and a half meters radius so that target could have been anywhere between six and a half seven meters around that bit it's not a pinpoint okay and any diver knows that who works on sonar you know so when we do a search we'll search 12 meters either side of that thing but we'll put a grid in and do it and that then we find the target now they didn't put a jack stay in what we call a jack stay search we put a jack stay and you swim the line you go across and you come backwards forwards backwards forwards backwards forward because it's a it's a systematic search so it's not a pinpoint and what we would normally do i would drop a line with a weight and it would fly to the bottom and it would mark roughly the you know the area where the divers set up on this case the reason we didn't do it is because the marker the marker would have given away to the media that we actually found a target and then i think that's important as well that that, that um i agree with him there because the media hadn't been controlled properly with the Gainer Lord case, of course, they cordoned off the park. Nobody was allowed anywhere near the water. And when they found Gainer and they put a marker there, now at this crime scene, or you know whether you call it a crime scene, at this uh, scene, uh, um, there were press everywhere, weren't they? You know, so they were all, and it's such, such a small area. It really is a tiny area. The press should have been kept miles away. They set up a media tent, didn't they, at the actual bench, near the bench, I think. You know, which they should never have been allowed to do at any time while they were searching for Nicola. Um, and, you know, he, he, you know, I agree with him there. They, they wouldn't put a marker there because as soon as they put a marker then the press know that um they there's a potential uh they potentially found her and they're going to be all over it if they're not kept away so first thing that should have happened there peter's seen a target police then should have got all the press everyone who wasn't anything to do with anything away from the scene peter put his marker down but there is another it is an example another example of how uh, the police did not control the scene properly now what you think the reasons for for that are i don't know i i think there was just this i really do think they just cocked it all up from day one and then they could never get back on they could never get back in control do you know they lost the control from the very first day with uh you know various for various reasons and then they could never get that control back and um you know if it's true that peter saw that was nicola that peter saw there then that's uh, the family that suffered for that but I, I, I still don't like the way that peter's done it if it turns out that sona is correct he said many times that he checked the sonar. He had the evidence to prove it, that there was nobody there. And he only, you know, this him saying that she was there, uh, really, well, he'd, uh, he'd had, when he had Luke up there to his place, apparently told Luke about it then. So he was thinking of doing whatever then. 
but uh yeah i think he's only anyway never mind but i agree with him there so if the pre if the police would have controlled the scene better he could have put a marker there is nowhere in any media where i said we found the target as you know there's nothing so they never knew what we then done was carried on up the river to take the um, take the focus away from the divers and us so we just carried on and i the media said to me you know what's going on i said oh well, they're just doing a bit of diving and i never mentioned to it you see so that's the that's protocol just in case uh people don't know what you've mentioned towfish a few times can you just yeah. clarify what a towfish is for people yeah, it's, a, it's a big missile about three foot long like a missile it looks like a rocket hanging under airplane and it's got yellow bright yellow and what's it's the on job it's on a cable and it, 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 it through the cable it brings a signal back to the computer okay. so it sends sound waves across the image the seabed and that them same sound waves bounce off and it comes back in and it's processed by the computer which ultimately gives me the image right thank you for clarifying yep. that yep uh, i think you've kind of already answered this but it is a question that i said i would ask uh do you do you think that the media were a problem in this case i don't think the media were a problem i think the lack of police information being given to the media was the problem um as i said um before um there was no comms officer down there yeah he's right there and the police have admitted that in their review so i think we can all agree on, that's one thing we can all agree on was it's not the thing of the media will only be a problem if you allow them to be a problem the there always is a press officer on a major job and I, I mean if you look back a few weeks a few months ago there was the case where the sadly the little baby was gone missing with the parents that was eventually found in brighton sussex police gave a daily update every yeah. day to the media every day and there was not one criticism and they yeah that and it's true that was dealt with uh you know as far as the media is concerned very well that was a very sad case wasn't it that was the parents who it's a very strange thing maybe we'll find out what the reasons were for it all so that was the uh, woman uh, sort of like a socialite wasn't she and her husband uh, i think there were some drugs issues disappeared uh, after she gave birth and they had some sort of accident in their car why they were hiding i don't know maybe there were warrants out for them or whatever i don't know the full story but i don't know if you remember it um you know it was on the news every day they were looking for this couple and they were worried about the baby and unfortunately eventually the couple were arrested and but the baby had deceased and they found uh you know the baby's body is very very sad but yes as far as media is concerned you know the police kept uh everybody up to date the thing is these things are in the public interest whether they should be or shouldn't be people wanted to know what had happened to that baby people took an interest you can't just say oh it's nothing to do with you you know of course it is the public have an interest in these things good for good reasons or bad um and mainly good because they're concerned they're concerned about the welfare of the baby just as people are concerned about the welfare of nicola it's not for bad reasons you know so i think the the police should have just accepted that and and that they definitely didn't the lancashire police did not deal well with the media and they admitted it to be fair in their report done an excellent job unfortunately they found the baby deceased a really sad job but the, the police briefed the media and that's all they need to do now again after the leveson inquiry as martin brunt said in his recent book already it, it's more about now what's happened relationships between the media have been fractured and normally the media would get an off the record chat and say look we're dealing with a vulnerable person we don't want you to report on that but just be careful how you report and they wouldn't report on it you see but now it's very fractured so there, there's a big issue and the media were going mad up there because they weren't getting any updates all they are doing is their job they i know some people some some media outlets might skew the truth a bit you know um and to, to sell the papers or whatever yeah but you just need the, the public are waiting for the facts 
And if you'd have a daily press statement, just someone there every day, then it would have been a lot easier. And that's the other thing I'll get onto here. I was accused. I do agree with him there. If there would have been somebody there, now that's how he ended up getting involved. But he should have known better in my eyes. But I agree with him up to the point that there should have been a police press officer. So he, you know, he, but he, I also believe when the press approached him, he should have just said, I can't comment. Used in the report as wanting to do it. And this, this is comical. I mean, myself and my, uh, my senior officer laughed at this. And, and this was all taped. They said I was waiting to do a photo opportunity with the chief i mean i don't i certainly don't my i don't need the publicity i was there and i couldn't get away from it unfortunately and i paul was going mad okay paul on the thursday paul ansell the nicholas partner i was talking to him and the family in the back of the caravan we all witnessed by by all these with the family liaison officer and he was saying to me when are you going to search the sheds in the village why are you not searching the outbuildings and he was crying his eyes out and he said well we can't just search the sheds without a warrant and i said well of course you can you just go and ask you know you yeah. don't need a warrant just yeah see again um you know he's interfering isn't he in the investigation he, I mean, he was there just to go up and down the river and and look in the river and he shouldn't have really been interfering with um the you know you can just imagine i bet this just wasn't good was it you know he's he doesn't know about the investigation so he shouldn't really interject himself in it and paul zach was asking for the outbuildings to be searched that's what he asked for on the interview wasn't it he said it definitely wasn't the river and he thought that the phone etc were decoys that's what he was saying uh, in the interview with Dan Walker. But then later on at the inquest, it was like, oh, well, we always took the harness off, you know. So there's so much, so many stories changing in this. And, yeah, I'm surprised because what he's saying here, but the family have not come out in support of him in any way. I thought, God, what do the family think of this? I just honestly, I would just say to anybody, if you want to understand what, how, why I feel the way I do about uh, Peter or did when he, he first came out with this, just imagine that this was your loved one. This was your loved one just left there for, and you were in torment for another however many days. I would be fuming, I would be heartbroken just as it's coming up to Christmas and you're just about trying to get some semblance of life back after losing your loved one like that and this comes out and it's all back up again. You know, I think people have got to understand that that's why people, if you can empathise with that, how the family must have felt, then to I just imagine if that was me and my son or my sister or any of my family, you know, you're believing one thing and then suddenly uh, this, you know, comes out. Just like you'd be fuming, you would be fuming uh, and you would be heart or heartbroken or whatever. The thought, you you know, any of you know that if you, the thought of your loved one lying in that river for all that time is not, you know, when thinking that they could have been brought out quicker, is not nice search someone's shed you just knock on the door would you mind sir we've done it loads of times working with the police up in on the sarah benford case you not a problem you can just open the open the i'm going to ask them and they freely open the door if they've got nothing to hide if they hide it you go and get a warrant so that and that was interesting so then we came out and um i said to the sergeant you need to get your senior officers down here paul wants to do a press statement and he wants to talk to get the facts out because you're not updating anybody. Can you come back to me as soon as possible and let me know? I waited and then he went on leave. Never heard back. So I that was, again, beating me up in the report. Yeah, I think there was a lot of that, wasn't it? People going on leave for, you know, 
I don't know, because maybe they just didn't take this case seriously enough right from the beginning. Well, they definitely didn't, did they? And now it's blown up in their face. Um, so, but again, I, they probably would have thought, oh, please don't tell us what to do. You know, it'd be like if you rock up to SGI, if I rock up there tomorrow and say, right, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. You know, you, I think Peter maybe shouldn't have been this, this, obviously some bad blood there for whatever reason he's trying to tell them what to do they don't want to be told what to do so. well i mean what we've got to consider here excuse me i just got an itchy eye um this report was meant to be looking into lancashire's police's policing of this job this wasn't about peter falling but most of the report they've come out gleaming and I've been stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. It's quite comical. And I'm glad I'm here tonight actually being able to tell the truth. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't think the police came out gleaming. I think they didn't come out gleaming at all. It, you know, you must have read a different report to me because I read it and I, I felt, you know, I've been through it uh, a couple of times and I didn't feel that they come, came out gleaming at all. Um, but he did uh, get quite vilified and maybe it's not justified but uh it just makes you wonder what why you know what's i i just always want to know why i i do believe i don't if basically what he's saying is the police were lying in what they said in that report then he's done the right thing to send it off to the government or whatever and hope that we'll see what happens we'll see what happens will they uh, but he said he doesn't want a new investigation. So what does he want? What he wants is to be exonerated. He wants his reputation to be exonerated. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. We'll see. Because everything has been taped when we spoke to the college police. Everything has been witnessed. And that is a total lie. It's a totally misleading statement. Because those who know me well enough, they know I'm an honest guy. I don't lie. I don't mislead people. And I, if you go on my social media, you'll see there's no selfies of me. I don't, I'm not a self-publicist. It's all your animals. Oh, it's all my animals. I live <laughs> on a farm. So I've got all these beautiful animals. I've got my dog. Now, that's not true, Peter, because he says he doesn't lie. But he does, because first of all, he's taken off his social media, uh, off his website. He's taken off that he used to do those um you know, uh, what's the word, crowd dispersal, sort of uh, protest dispersal at the uh, animal, at the beagle thing, at the Huntingdon Life uh, Sciences, that's gone. So he's manipulated that. He also manipulates his social media, posts disappear, they appear, they disappear. He limits uh, comments. He only allows certain people to make comments. He then banned me, as you know, even though I've never, ever, ever, not even once, put a comment on any of his social media. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, none of it. He banned me on uh, Twitter. And I just wonder why, because it was just after Mark Williams Thomas did it. So somebody's obviously been watching my videos and realised I'm not like, uh, you know, in this fan club of Peter. I question things. I don't just take blindly what anybody says. You know, I've got an independent mind. And there are some things I agree with, Peter, and there are some things that I don't. So if you're going to ban someone, even though they've never, you know, I could understand it if I'm on there, you know, actually mm. uh, being nasty, which are probably uh, not, not exactly nasty with Mark Williams Thomas, but I have commented on his Twitter and questioned things that he said but uh, so i can see that in a way but uh, peter never have and the other thing he does is um when nobody not everybody can comment anyway on his twitter he limits everything he, he so that's another thing that i've come to realize about peter he does manipulate you know saying he, he doesn't take self these pictures of him all over his uh, social media and he also manipulates his social media my God, the number of disappearing posts. Good job for screenshots, or you'd think you'd go mad because one minute it's there and then it's gone. We'll see what happens with the next, uh, uh, you know, and that's happened over YouTubers and things. And, oh, this is a very good, uh, 
YouTube video, next day it's gone because he's moved on to another one then that he thinks is very good or he's realised that that YouTuber, the video that they've put on is a bit strange. So he's moved on to another one. So these are the things that where he's not, it's not true, this what he's saying. Uh, the, he has manipulated his social media. Dog's laying down here by the fire now, but, you know, that's me. I'm not a, I'm not a selfie person. I've never, I'm not, I'm not exactly George Clooney, you know, so I think it's, I don't really, that's not fair. And that's not fair to beat somebody up who's a partner, who's worked with the police and done so much good work for since 1999 and many years before that in other work and then he's talking about himself here by the way just to try and discredit you it's totally unfair yeah totally i just want to say to anyone that's come in like recently because i think 500 people more have come in since we started uh there's a lot of questions being asked the the 50 questions that uh, are being asked today were asked by the public about three or four days ago on a live video um they have all been asked by yourselves they've been noted down so if, if people are asking questions now, they're not being answered. The opportunity was there a few days ago. Uh, otherwise, this would be pure, pure carnage. So please understand that if you are asking a question here. Moderators um, will explain that uh, to you. Moderators doing a great job, by the way. Fantastic job. So uh, keep up the good work. It's very appreciated. Right, moving on to 17. Do you believe that Nicola went in the water beyond the bench? Right. Um, so where I found the target, um, I, I believe she went in between the bench and the target, but I can't confirm that she went in at that particular point by the bench. I've, I've, no one will know. There's no evidence to suggest, you know, she could have been running away from somebody. She could have been struggling. I don't know. And I don't think any of us know exactly where. No, I don't think any of us do know if she were even was in there in the first place and he's right there and nobody knows. Did, did she fall? Was she pushed? Did she jump? We just don't know because of that missing 10 minutes. Uh, something that's, you know, still seems funny to me. No splash. So all those things that, you know, came up at the inquest that we didn't know about the scream or whatever, but nobody heard a splash, did they? Nobody um, and although Nicola was slight, she still would have made a big splash when she went in that water. So uh, that's that's a real strange thing for me. Nobody heard a splash. Where she went in. And, and the area initially wasn't sealed off as a crime scene anyway. Oh. Um, so there's no evidence there to suggest, you know, you've lost it. I mean, that's why you always tape an area off. So I... Yep. I, I don't want to. I don't want to speculate on that. But where she was found here, a bit further down, which we're going to later, it could have been any part of that river. That first seventy-five meters. Yeah. So it would just be pure speculation, right now. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't want to sort of say Peter Fawley said this because I nobody. There's no evidence to suggest any do. If it was summertime, then you can get the undergrowth, like you know, someone the grass can lay flat, and where there's evidence and shrubbery. Call it, we call it ground sign in the trade where sticks could get broken and you know green stick shows like a bit like a fracture you know it shows that the stick's been snapped off yeah well i was there in the summer wasn't i, I went there and you, you you would definitely know that you'd have to fight your way through that uh, foliage to get to the river you know you literally would you couldn't walk down to the edge like you know the the pictures that you'll all have seen of last january um there was no greenery so you could literally just walk to the edge without a problem but i still think surely there would have been scuff marks from someone falling in or being pushed in or whatever if the, certainly if there was a struggle they should have been but as peter said and he's correct the police did not cordon off the scene so that was all gone any evidence that there might have been but yeah if it would have happened in the summer you couldn't have got you literally would have had to force your way through uh, to be a, and that would have uh, shown afterwards. She could have slid down the bank and grabbed things, but yeah. we've got none of that in the winter, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, thank you for that, Peter. Number eighteen of fifty. <laughs> um, only on number. Do eight. you believe that Nicola was in the river the whole 
time. Yes, I do. Yes. But we'll okay. come on to we'll come on to the bit about where how she got to where she was later on. But yes, I do believe she was in the river all the but time. What what Peter means about we'll come on to that later on is after the fifty questions, Peter's gonna do a start to finish, very in depth, uh yeah. taking us from the start to the end of the whole search from yeah. Peter and from FGI meticulously. Oh, that's interesting. So at the end, he's going to uh, give his, uh, you know, his uh, propaganda. <laughs> no, so he's going to give his uh, version of what happened. So he's now saying, yes, she was definitely in the river at the time. Do you know, does it, surely, I, I'm sorry, Peter, but with the best will in the world, you have to see how that is completely the opposite to what you said for months, not just while you were there, but what you said for months about she was definitely not in the river. Even when you appeared on the James English um, YouTube channel, you stated again, she was categorically not in the river, definitely not in the river. So you, you really have to see that this is the crew. There's no point in just getting angry with people and saying they're trying to discredit you. No one's trying to discredit you. People are just picking up on the facts of your own words, your own words. Um, so. Methodically and very informatively. So even after all these questions, stick around because you're going to get a full, very in-depth, um, detailed narrative of the search from Peter. So stick around for that. Okay, just let me go on to the next one. Thank you, everybody, in the chat again. Not right. Okay, 19. Okay, again, a question that's been asked a few times. Now, do you regret talking to the media as much as you did in hindsight? Of course I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just wish, you know, I got, I, I've been beaten up left, right and centre by people. But um, I, and again, talking to police officers lately, you know, talking about this. And of course I do. I mean, I, I didn't want to be there talking to the media. So I, my team know that. I don't do that. But I had no... Yeah, so he's going to blame it on the police again. See, this is, he's got to, you've got to own it. He's got to own it. He was wrong. He should just say, yeah, I shouldn't have spoken to, you know, his own experience, his self proclaimed experience that he's had for years should make him know he should not have been speaking to the media. So I wish Peter would just own this and just say, yeah, I shouldn't have spoken to the media. It was a mistake. And again, he's trying to blame it on everybody else. I was literally surrounded. And what I didn't want to do is offend people, you know, because I know a lot of these reporters over the years. And they're sort of yeah. like, oh, he's... And if I didn't have wanted to been there, then they may, you know, they need a story. So they'll start to... And I always advise people, you know, we worked on other jobs where I've said... You need to get the, the story out here right to the media. Give all they're after is it, and, and any media watching this tonight who listens to this in the future will go, Yeah, we just want a couple of pictures. We want a couple of pictures of a boat in the water. We want to, well, how's your sonar work? What does it do? And they want to fill the gap. And then the public, which we all read the papers, want to read. It's just yeah. the facts. They just want the facts. And let's get that right. They want the facts. And if we get that right, then the media will then go off to their van and they'll have a cup of tea. They'll download the information and they come back for the five o'clock, six o'clock news or whatever it may be. That's all they want. They're just doing their job. Otherwise, they will then start guessing things. And if you give them the facts about sonar, give them how it worked, give them about a couple of pictures, off they go. They won't bother you anymore. Yeah, but you did enough to say that she definitely wasn't in the river. That you know, you given them the information. You didn't give them just the information about the sonar. You made, uh, you know, you said what you thought had happened, and that she definitely categorically wasn't. So the, I, I don't agree with Peter in this. What he's saying, he did the, he did wrong, and he should just admit that he did wrong. And then, you know, at the end of the day, um, yeah. The police should have dealt with it, but they didn't. But that didn't mean he had to step in and fill that space. And he knows that. 
Well, thank you for being very honest with that because you, yeah. you answered in there saying that, like, yeah, um, yeah you definitely. do regret talking to him as much yeah. as you did. I think that's very honest of you. So I think a lot of people appreciate that answer. So thanks for being yeah. so honest there, Peter. Yeah. Uh, 20, and then we can get to a little break time because the call of nature will <laughs> definitely be you. We'll have to take it in turns, Pete. <laughs> yeah, so you can go first. I'll have to add this. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, 20. Did um do you know if any of the search dogs went near to the target area? I don't, Luke. I'll be I'll be honest. When we were there, when we were there, there was no search activity going on whatsoever when we were there. So we arrived on the sick, and one of the reporters came up and he said, Blimey, it's all suddenly got busy since you here. That we've seen hardly anyone here. So I think by that stage they'd established that probably Nicker will float up somewhere. Um the cert, there was, I saw a couple of search officers, you know, with search officer on their back, but they weren't actually searching. And most of the police officers on site were local beat officers wearing body armor. You know, I tell a search officer, they're not wearing body armor. They've just got search officer on the back. And they were just walking down the bank chatting because. Yeah, so he's having a little dig at the police there. Cause, so don't forget on the first day that Nicola went missing. There were a lot of searches done. So, uh, you know, they might have got to a point there where they were just going backwards and forwards and that. But it's wrong to say they did not search. They did search in the beginning from the first day. They did search. But um, maybe they searched a few times and then they maybe they were thinking, oh, well, she will bobble poor. You know, but uh, he's getting his little dig in there as well. It's like it's like superhero Peter to the rescue. They more to keep a visual a visual um, presence really for the police. So, I I know the police divers and were out in their boats working working further away. I know they were, but the, around where we were, there was no search activity, and I saw no no cadaver dogs when we were there. Well, that's very interesting. Very very interesting indeed. Moving on to 21 of the 25 before we get to the halftime whistle. On the 19th of February, when Nicola was found, would she have been in the same position? And I think what that means is in the position that you saw her in the target. Would you know that? No, no I wouldn't know. I can't answer that. I mean, I, you know, a body can... A body can go into rigor mortis, it can remain stiff, it loosens up again, and they, it's, you know, I can't answer that. I honestly don't know how, where, I don't know the exact position. If I'm being totally honest here, I've I've lost touch by this time. I don't know where, all I know is she was found down the lower end on the corner, but I don't know the exact I've not really followed it too much, to be fair. I've sort of kept away from it. That my job, I did my job, and that was it. It's quite interesting, that isn't it? He's not really followed it, to be fair. How can he not have followed it when it's this is so crucial to his reputation and everything? Uh, it's very strange that I think. How can he not? Of course, he's followed it. I don't, you know, of course he has. Ah, you know, so you don't follow something that's so so relative to your your business, and he just hasn't followed it because he just doesn't care really. But you know, it's, don't you see what I'm saying? It just seems like an odd thing to say. I've not really followed it. I don't know anything about it. So she could have been found in any position. I, I've got no idea. When I, when when I got that question, I kind I kind of felt like that was mm. kind of going to be the answer. But again, yeah, yeah. given given the opportunity for people to ask these questions, so I thought I'd yeah. throw it your way. Uh, sure. Can we can we get some more likes uh, in the chat, please? More gratitude, for Peter Holden, for coming on here, no, being so honest, no. um, and you know doing this live for us. So let's uh, hit that like button, please, everybody. And we'll move on to question twenty-two. Will you be sending the sonar images for third-party analysis? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going out to the US <clears throat> with the sonar images. Now, I, I alone can see that it's a body. Without, I don't need to go anywhere. I've also given it to my other sonar operator, which I've got one very good one who I trained over the years at work, and he's agreed that it's a body. Um, we don't need anyone else, but we are doing that to get, to two US experts to verify how I find. <clears throat> now, 
the thing is about the sonar data, I want to talk about this now while we're talking about it. Um, a sonar image. Now, when the College of the Policing, so I sent... I, now, I just want to say there, this is what we're waiting for. He says, I'm going out to the US. Seems like he can send it by WhatsApp to a YouTuber who's in the US, but not to a sonar expert. Also, he's been out to the US because he's been promoting his book in America. So he, he went to the US. Why did he not take it then? Why has he waited all this time to have those, uh, you know, people saying, oh, he said he'd do it in the new year. But he's had since last February to do this. You know, I, I just don't understand that. If that was me, my reputation, I'd be straight there. So he's been to the US already, so he could have took them then if he had to take them. He sent them by WhatsApp to a YouTuber in the US and he sent them by WhatsApp to his uh, friend, the psychic. So why suddenly has he got to go to the US to do it? There's something brewing, I think. I think you'll find there's something brewing here because he could have had those images checked professionally a million times by now there's just no reason to wait i've waited all this time i'll get do you mind if i go into this because this this bit really bugs me and i yeah I go, go into as much uh, as you need to we've got as long as it yeah. takes so i attended a police meeting with the college of policing in london at hotel on the 5th of um Hang on, let me get this right 5th september i've got to keep all these dates in my mind i'm not i've got no notes here um and I attended in a hotel room with a witness, again, a senior ex-officer as of my witness. Um, and <clears throat> all the questions on uh, were those sent to me pre beforehand. And there was nothing about my search at all in the questions. It was all about why did you speak to the media? Why did you disagree with the coroner's report? Why did you do this? And we thought, that's very strange. So what about the report? So I answered them all, but we also wrote this out. Now, bearing in mind this had been recorded, they recorded it. So that's good. Um, I was happy with that. I was also asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement three times within that meeting so I could never speak. And I was also asked pre the meeting to sign India, which I refused. Uh, I'm just wondering, well, how did he disagree with the coroner's report? Because, you know, I know he wrote to the coroner, which he said he never got a reply. But he did not write to the coroner before the inquest. He wrote to the coroner in September. Um, so, yeah, be it, I'd love to, hopefully, one day, if this investigation does, you know, if he his uh, representations to the government are successful, he says everything's been recorded. So, let yeah, play the recordings, release the transcripts of the recordings. Then people, you know, because at the moment it is a bit like, you know, the police say this and Peter says that and what's the truth? So if they've got recordings, then, you know, we'll know the truth then, won't we? I totally refused to sign an NDA because I know that I'd never be able to talk. Uh, yeah. as I was so passionate about this case because I've never seen anything like it. Um, and I, I got to the end of the... Well, just before he said that he's not even followed it, now he's saying he's so passionate about it. So, you know, he does say a lot of conflicting things, I'm afraid. Questions. And it was getting to about, I think it was about 10 to 2, whatever time it started, I can't remember, but it was 10 minutes before the end of the meeting. And um, I said, I just need to... If you turn to page 7, I said that's Nicola Bully laying in the river. I said, what do you mean, Nicola Bully? So I said, well, if you turn to that, there's a picture. Now, what I did, <clears throat> I gave them the first image that I found at 10.34 that morning, okay? So I commenced my search that morning. We'll come on to it again at 10.28. Six minutes later at 10.34, I found the target. That was six minutes into my search in the area of the bench. Yeah. And um, just down from the bench. Um. And then I talked them through it and I said, you, you can't see the shadows here. I thought, I'm actually, we, we agreed that we weren't going to give them any more images at this stage because we're, well, I just wanted to see how serious they were about looking at this data. So then I said, I need to show you the day. She said, we haven't got time. We've got, we've only got the room for two hours. So you're going to have to wrap up now. I said, well, I really just need to show you this. And okay. So they came over, showed the image. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. So I said, you need to come back to me to actually look at this data properly because without the computer, you, I need, I need to go through a lot with you. Now, 
even me, I can I can look at a picture of a of a body on a sonar image and go, yeah, that's a body. <clears throat> but when you're doing an inquiry, you have to get all the evidence, and you can't do it without looking. So we never heard back. Now, don't forget. So in one breath, he's saying there that without the computer, you couldn't see it properly. But he sent it to Deborah, the psychic, and she said she could see it as clear as day. It must be because she's a psychic. She could see bottom, head, feet, shoulders. She could see as clear as anything. Now, what he's saying here is that when he showed it in this police review, it, they couldn't see it. Oh, you know, I'd really like to hear the recording, you know, for the truth of it all. And then I got a letter saying, well, shortly were an email that we're going to be publishing the report. I thought, well, hang on a minute. No one's even asked me for the data. And I, I know I'm going to get criticised anyway. So what about my target? What do you think about that? Yeah. So <clears throat> I then sent a further four or five images and the one of Nicola laying there very clearly. Now, I, I want to say I showed a police officer, um, three police officers over the last um, two, three weeks. I said, what does that look like? And they said, it looks like a person with their... So he's shown another three police officers as well. OK, Peter, my God, is there anybody... I'm starting to feel left out. I mean, is there anybody who hasn't seen these images? Leg, legs bent and sort of laying on the side. I said, thank you. That's Nicola Bully. I showed a paramedic on Monday in Bristol. He said exactly the same. And today... A paramedic in Bristol. OK, there's another one. Hey. I shared the image with my good friend Deborah Davis, psychic medium. You know, Debbie from the... This is the psychic. Real Housewives of Cheshire. <clears throat> and she's a very good friend and trustworthy friend. So um, I sent it to her in confidence and she burst out crying. Sorry, Peter. Just what, I'm not diving in anything you're saying no. here, but that is, that is something that a lot of people are asking me about, which I was going to get to. Uh, mm. So, yeah, please, can you... Could you Go into that in some more detail of about sending that to Debbie today. <clears throat> yeah, I sent I sent the image to my good friend Debbie Davis, who you know from the Real Housewives of Cheshire and psychic medium, very well known person. And Debbie's been a not really that well known. I'd never heard of her, but I suppose it depends if you watch it or not. A good friend of mine for years, and you know they come down to her house, and um, and and I trust Debbie totally. And um, I sent her the image, and she was in tears on the phone. So he sent. He must have sent it by message because he said she was on tears uh, in tears on the phone. So he's just said there. He showed it to three policemen, uh, a paramedic. Luke, of course, has seen it, and Debbie. But he wasn't going to show it anybody out of respect to the family. And I said, well, you know, just tell me what it looks like, you know. And she said, it looks like a person laying on the bottom. And she doesn't even see sonar. Um, she doesn't understand sonar, and from that, uh, and, and they're the images I sent to the police. But also, what I did if you imagine a crime scene out of Colombo or something like that, and then you get a body laying on the floor and they chalk around it the shape. Yeah, so what I've done for the police, I actually chalked around it with a blue line, and it can clearly see the body laying on the bottom without, without a doubt. And the beauty of this, I then sent a letter. Now, what I want you to do is read this letter out to you, if I can fire my laptop up. Bear with me. I've got my tablet, and I normally have it connected to my laptop. Do you want to do this now or after the questions, Peter? I'd like to do it now. Go for it. If I can, because I think, it's, I think it's quite important. I just need to open it. I normally use it in normal mode. Bear with I me. I just want to say, Peter, that these images that uh, people already know this, the images that... Debbie seen, I've also seen. And when, especially when highlighted with the blue, the blue pen that you've highlighted, that looks like a female body lying on the riverbed. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. I've already said yeah. this and I'll just make it clear again. So there you go. Luke's going along with it as well. Um, in a moment, I think I'm going to play you that video that Debbie made. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just trying to get my password in. Bear with me. I'm just, I'm on a tablet rather than the, Excuse me a second, everybody. It's all right. Excuse Peter with technology. He's cracking no, on a bit. He's cracking I on took, a bit now. I deliberately took the tablet. I'll get my wife to pass me the laptop bit up. I, I messed it up on the uh, 
I, I disconnected my tablet from the actual computer. <laughs> I thought I was trying to be smart tonight, but it's actually it's backfired on me now. It's so all right. I, I always have technical glitches. I'm, uh, yeah, I know, I know you do. Yeah. Part, part, I'm doing all right tonight, though. For once. <laughs> I want to. Sorry, I'm in a bit of. Let me just click this in. Bear with me. Just find 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 the computer. Bear with me. Let's try and find this. Dooba dooba doo. Sorry, everybody. No, Maybe. don't worry about it. Peter, while you're just finding that, give me 30 seconds to run to the toilet, right? Because I am Okay. Bursting. Okay. Guys, That's fine. Let me you just... just you just enjoy looking at Peter and I'll be I've back. Got, no, don't seconds. do that. <laughs> uh, Pete, just hang, hang on. Okay, for no, I'll do. <clears throat> so, That's fine. Thanks, Don. I'll, I'll have a tea when you're ready. <laughs> Thank you. Talk, talk, talk about that Christmas tree yeah. behind you. <laughs> mm. Well, those, <clears throat> those of you who have not seen Luke's previous documentary... He spent three days with me. We brought his daughter down and he'd done a documentary. I've got lots of animals. So I've got alpacas. I've got emus. I've got pigs. They're all pets, by the way. And we've got three turkeys. I've got a turkey called Gerald, but he's not for Christmas. And it, and he, he chases my mum around because my mum lives on the farm, in the farm on a cottage around the corner. Um, and he chases my mum around and my daughter. So, yeah, we live with a lot of animals and uh yeah, it's it's the, the Christmas tree is in in just across from the house in another another area, so it's it'll be a big open fire here, which is great. So I, I I thought this next letter, this is really important for people to hear, because this is a letter I sent to the police pleading with them to look at the data, which is extremely important. I'll just wait for Luke to get back. Um, and I've got a copy of this. I'm not going to name the individual I sent it to because I don't want hate mail and stuff like that, you know, from not from yourselves, but there are trolls around who have watched this in the future and then start starting things. So it, it is to the College of Policing and it's to the one of the um, senior people there. And I'll read it out to you. So this is a letter that he said he sent to the senior policing um one of those senior police in the College of Police and Review. Let's see, hear what he's got to say. Right. So. I appear and back. <laughs> thank you, Carl. So I'm going to read read this letter out. So. What did, what did you call me then? No, nothing. Um, oh, that's where he called him by the wrong name, wasn't it? He said, thank you, Carl. And uh, Luke said, what did you call me then? Um, so, so <laughs> if you can imagine, <clears throat> I sent, I gave them the initial image of the sonar shadows of the you know this is where i do i do feel you know i do feel there's been there's been a bit of a manipulation area uh, who is carl i wonder <laughs> maybe mm. carl's the person he said the thing to and that was what was on his mind body okay and you can see two arms sort of sticking out um initially two arms two legs initially until and then the what the the police then dived the target and said it was nothing. They literally said it was nothing, and I had to go with that because and I was baffled why it was nothing and I thought it was wrong. So we'll come on to how I got the later on. So then when I wasn't invited to the inquest, so I made a statement that afternoon to say she's categorically not in the river. I want to cover this bit off. Um, that was on the police diver diving my target and said it was nothing. I wasn't happy, <clears throat> but it's not my operation, so I can't do anything. So then I went back that afternoon at 4.30 in the afternoon approximately, and it's all time date stamped, to re-sonar the area, which I did, and we got more images. So the target was there. Now, a sonar image is that cannot be generated by nothing. So if you look at a... Um, a a, a sonar image. Um, if I stood with my back to the sun <clears throat> and I put my arms up, you'll see two arms sticking out. Or move my leg like that, you'll see a shadow cast on the ground. That's exactly what it does with sonar. But with a sonar, you normally get the, the shape of the bot, the picture of the body, and then the sonar. The first picture was creating shadows alone with with like two arms like that. Then the later one I went on, I scanned. Oh, I'm gone. So, I'm going to show you this video from Deborah. So, this is the video that the psychic made. So, he's talking about these images. Let's see how clear she said they were.
Have you sick? This has disappeared. I've just been sat staring at that picture and I feel sick. Oh. Ow. Why do they make ceilings so low in cars, honestly? Um, hi, everybody. If you're watching me on Catch Up, um, I've got something to tell you all. Um, I've got something really important to tell you all. Um, hang on one second. Just wait until more. Wait a minute. Pin. pin. Have I just pinned that comment? Feel sick. This video came out the day of feel sick the what I've just answer. seen. Um, I oh know it's pinned. Right. So this video was released just before the question and answer session. And she then pinned the link to that question and answer. So it was totally set up. It was totally set up. See, this is these are other things that have made me feel differently about Peter. He has to take responsibility for his own actions for setting up all these uh, awful things. That, that That's why I felt like a bit iffy about him. I, I trusted him implicit, implicitly right from the beginning. He's caused this. I haven't done anything. I haven't changed anything. He has done this. So I think, he, you know, uh, Peter or anybody of his trolls that are watching, you have to bear responsibility for your own actions. I've pinned a comment um, and I've pinned it for a reason. I feel sick. <laughs> ridiculous. The more you see it, the more ridiculous it is. I'm just um, waiting for more people, for you all to um, jump in onto this live. Wow. I wasn't expecting to have just seen what I have just seen. You don't need to click on that link now. That link is a live stream on YouTube that's happening tonight at half seven um and it's my i feel i feel really sick i'll explain to you why and i'll um i'll try to explain um sorry i'm sat here with gold nails as well because i'm at a party I don't actually think I even need to comment on this. I think you can make your own mind up. Party tomorrow and I'm wearing a gold dress. Sorry, I'm sat here bloody crying on a live stream. Right, I have to say it quickly because otherwise... Um, I've just... been speaking and i just want to say one thing that when i played this on my youtube deep trolls came into my chat i mean really really deep trolls like spelling out awful words and really trying to disrupt the chat that came from this came because i was playing this video you know, and anyone who was on that chat that day, you will have seen it. And I, you know, it was awful. And it was to stop me playing this video. I know that. To Peter Folding. You've got Peter tonight, Peter, yeah? Friend. Wow. you got boxing, yeah? Uh, and he said, I want your yeah. opinion on something. Because, you know, um, this whole inquiry that happened recently where the police were basically investigating themselves for the conduct over Nicola Bully. God rest her soul. Well, um, 
and Peter had kept it to himself how he found her on and and he could clearly see her on the sonar footage and he kept it to himself until this inquiry came out where they yet again tried to blame him um and said that he didn't find her peter asked me for my opinion not uh, literally 20 minutes ago i feel sick saying it and he said if I send you a picture of the sonar footage from that day, Debbie, um, will you give me your honest opinion? Because I don't know. I haven't got a clue about sonar footage. I've no, no idea about sonar footage at all. Um, oh, that was what a good idea said, to send it to you. I then. honestly think that the picture is clear enough for even somebody like you, he said, that doesn't know anything about sonar footage. He sent me the picture of what he found on that day on the sonar footage of Nicola. <sighs> Having palpitations. Um, you can see her head, shoulders, arms, her bottom, her back, her bottom, her legs. As clear as that, according to Debbie. Let's just hear that again. You can see her head, shoulders, arms, her bottom, her back, her bottom, her legs. Her bent, you can see her knees. Even her feet. Oh, even her feet. Why? Why did he get told? No, don't put your divers down. On that, that picture's nothing. Don't know why. Why? Has there been an inquiry and and they've said that it was nothing. Why? Something's very wrong. Something is very wrong. I'm telling you, something's very wrong. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yep. So what is going on? What is going on? That's what I'd like. What is going on? No idea. The police said, no, don't put your divers in the water. <sighs> Literally got palpitations. They said, we'll, we'll send a diver down. And then they said, but it's nothing. There's nothing to be seen here. Those were the words. There's nothing to be seen here. And she was in the That's water for two words. more weeks. I feel sick. I feel sick. Do you feel sick? I've just been sat staring at that picture and I feel sick. Oh my God, I think she feels sick. I really can't stand injustice. I think I, I can't. can't this life because I think if I don't, I think I need a drink of water or I'll faint. I really can't Sorry. stand injustice. I hope you're all right. I really can't there's more to this and i don't care about anybody saying armchair detectives whatever i don't i don't I really couldn't give a shit she can't give a shit oh, i can't give a shit I I drink water. Water. Yeah. Sick. oh you're getting yourself together a bit better now yeah Peter is going to be live on that link I've just put. Oh, just give him a comment with Luke, I'm another one boring. of my friends who's a YouTuber. He's the one who interviewed Peter, did the interview. Um, sorry, I can't even read comments at the moment. 
<laughs> good job now i think it's evident isn't it that uh why this video has been taken down because it doesn't look very good does it it's a good job you know some these videos coming this is the whole thing manipulating your social media like this there's always something wrong when people do that there's a reason for it um I need to I need to get over what I've just seen. Like and yet Peter Folding has been vilified and crucified when he went free of charge to go and search and he found her. That's but he's well, I don't, you know, because people still support him. So he hasn't really been vilified and crucified, unless he just means by the police. The only reason I have, have got angry with Peter is because of the things he's done himself. It's not, I wasn't, you know, I didn't even know about what the police were saying about him in the report when he came out and made that interview with Luke, saying that she was there all the time. That's when I just had a bit of a meltdown to be honest because of all those months of believing him everything he said and basing every video I ever did on the fact that he said she definitely wasn't in the river it was a bit of a shock and now the the actions is taken later it's the actions he's taken that have made me feel the way I have not that the police I wouldn't take the police's side against him I know they completely cocked up but why did he do this why did he send that image to her and why did she put this video out you know it's all made it worse to me he found her he found her see i've seen that picture and i feel like i can't really talk about it for much more to be honest with you because honestly <laughs> right now i feel an absolute gibbering wreck <laughs> oh it's definitely her 100 percent. 100 1 million percent it is her you can see her knees her legs her knees you, can, and you can see her lay there. The police apparently tried to say it was a log. It's not a log with a head, shoulders, arms, body, bottom. I what I don't understand is why has he got to send this sonar images off to experts in America when Debbie saw it as clear as day? Everything, arms, legs, feet, head, you name it. It was as clear as anything, according to Debbie can't talk about it any longer honestly but I've, I've pinned the link to the live stream that luke is doing with peter tonight at half past seven um peter is answering people's questions on that live stream okay i have to go i really honestly i'm i'm shocked beyond all belief i'm just shocked beyond Sorry. Right, I think that's enough, isn't it? So let's go back to the interview. Now it's coming to the end of this uh, part. Um, it's coming to the break time isn't it so we're just doing a little bit more just finish and then up i wanted more. to go back the following day to re-sonar the area but the police would not allow us to do that and we also wanted to search the weir and we said it's already done in case the target was moving so we totally refused at that stage we left leading up to the inquest i thought that i would be invited to the inquest mm -hmm. i thought i would, would be uh, i want to clarify this so then i was i was actually down in um Cornwall at the time and I started to go through the data all the files every single file Monday um, Tuesday all the files and every single file so it records a clip and it, I can go back over it and it can enhance it and then I got for, for file 22 and I clicked on it and then I magnified it slightly and there it was and I said to my wife that's Nicola and I was absolutely just blown away and at that stage, I thought, right, I'm going to present this at the inquest, this evidence. 
So technically, so what he's saying is then later on when he was on holiday in Cornwall, he started looking through the data again, even though he'd said on many occasions, she's definitely not in the river and I've uh, uh, got the data to prove it. Now, I don't know when this was. It was obviously before the inquest. But when he was on the James English um, YouTube, he categorically stated again she was definitely not there. So I'm not sure when that was... Um, recorded so you know <laughs> do you see what i'm saying it's later that he looked at these things you know it seems it's in response to not being invited to the inquest to not to get in probably an idea of what was coming up in the college of police in review then Maybe he's gone through these things. So he can't say that he found her on that day because he didn't go through those images there and then. What he's saying is later on he did. So if we, if we give him the benefit of the doubt and presume that that was Nicola, I mean, Debbie was convinced it was Nicola, wasn't she? Uh, she could see, she could practically see what lipstick she had on. Um, you know, if we take that, that, but he still, he didn't look at it till much later. So he didn't, you know, it's... It's like a, God, what do they call it? It's like a mitigation exercise, isn't it? It's a, like he's trying to mitigate. Um, I don't know, he's trying to salvage something. And I'm not saying I blame him. This is his reputation. It is his business. But I think I would respect him more if he'd come on and say, I didn't notice it at the time. But when I look more closely... You know, and say it in a way that instead of this, I found Nicola Bully. You know, he didn't. He didn't because he didn't look closely at that data. He's saying he's looked closely at it now, but it was a long time later. He has to admit that he spent a long time telling people that she definitely wasn't there. He, and he, it's almost like he's like, forget that bit. It's like that doesn't exist, just like that video of Debbie doesn't exist anymore. Just like this video of the question and answer doesn't exist anymore. You know, this is like, um, <laughs> you know, if, if things are, why are these things disappearing as well? To prove that she was in the river. And uh, I measured the target and I met, I can measure the back. There's a special software and I can measure the length of the back, which is just under a meter. I can measure the legs where they're bent and I can measure the lower laugh. I can measure the arms. And I can measure the shadow. I can measure the height of the target off the ground. I can pinpoint where it is and I can then magnify and I can change color palettes to enhance and then use raw data. You've got to bear in mind, I've been doing this since 1999. So I'm sort of sort of leading expert really? in this yeah. field. So oh, I do know. I'm the leading before, expert. And I do. This is the other thing that I don't really like about Peter. He is his own best publicist. He's told us so long what an expert he is. Sometimes I think that's why people can't accept that maybe you might have got it wrong because he's told us how brilliant he is for so long. You know the difference between a log and a body and or a handbag and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, so that's where we were. So I then got back that basically that there is nothing. And then I then wrote to them this letter because I was concerned that the report was going to be published and they haven't even seen the data on the computer which no one can tell so firstly who was the expert so if you bear with me everybody I'm going to read this out and this is the one I sent to the police on the 27th of October 2023 dear I'm not going to name the name I'm writing to you in advance of the imminent release of the report by the Col National College of Policing NCP into the conduct of Lancashire Police's handling of the Nicola Bully case. I would like to raise a concern directly with you that important and credible evidence which I provided to the police at the scene and as part of the investigation has not been fully scrutinised or followed up. Specifically, this relates to sonar images and live sonar data of a target that I located on the 7th of February 2023 during my search which i believe to be the body of nicola bully on the bottom of the river this was deemed negative by the northwest underwater search unit which baffled me as i'm never wrong with my sonar readings based on this negative find never wrong sorry but uh 
you know, and it may well be that that was Nicola. But of course, the other thing is, what difference does it make to the investigation? And how did Nicola get in the water? That's the key thing for me. That's all that matters to me, really. Finding, although still baffled, but with trust in the dive team, I made a public statement saying that I did not think she was in the river. The next day, I was refused an opportunity to rescan the same area and a search of the weir area was also refused. Several weeks later, with subsequent scrutiny of the images and data by myself, I now disagree that that target was negative and believe it was in fact positive. Without the opportunity to present my findings at the inquest, I presented the same evidence to your NCP team during the interview. The team were provided with images of the sonar shadows of the target and also saw briefly live data from our side scan sonar computer. But this had to be cut short as the interview room at the hotel had to be vacated for the next booking. However, he does like the sound of his own voice, doesn't he? I mean, we're not even halfway through this interview yet. Poor Luke looks <laughs> like he's just wishing he lost the will to live at this moment. But anyway, um, I forgot what I was going to say then. I wanted to go, yeah, uh, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, don't you think you wouldn't? Care if you never heard the word side scan sonar ever again. Just don't want to hear Based it. Based on the gravity of these revelations, I fully expected that further information would be requested from the NCP investigation team, such as measurements, location, latitude and longitude, and viewing of the actual live sonar data with the opportunity for me to explain my findings further. No requests have been received. Subsequent to the interview, this scroll down the page. This evidence, by hang on. Subsequent to the interview, I submitted this evidence to the coroner by recorded delivery, also with no response. At no point of any police agencies. Well, the coroner, Jay, he's not famous for his responses, is he? But uh, the thing is, bear in mind, this is not before the inquest. This was in September, so. I don't know, you know, the coroner probably should have replied to him. It's just common courtesy to reply, really, even if it's to say, oh, bog off, I'm not interested. You know, he should have replied, but uh, he doesn't reply he very often, doesn't reply. I've sent him a few emails. He's replied, I think, to one. Ever requested to see the full evidence, which I'm 100% certain that is of Nicola Nicola laying on the bottom of the river, approximately 75 metres from the bench. With GPS fluctuation of plus and minus five metres, plus one metre of towfish layback, therefore, this evidence cannot have been properly considered and will leave your report open to obvious criticism. With worldwide interest in this... They probably looked at that and thought, why didn't you do this ages ago, Peter? To be fair, you know... <laughs> He said he's waiting until he was called or whatever. He just, you know, you can't, st he could have, uh, you know, the police, you know, as I say, I'm not supporting them, but they probably thought, why are you doing this now? So this is a bit of a tit for tat thing between the police and Peter. It is, I believed it from the beginning. It's all about who's right, Peter or the police. It's not about Nikki. It's not about anything to do with what happened to Nikki. It's just who was right case unprecedented unprecedented public scrutiny and trust in the police and already all-time low reporting this finding accurately will be an opportunity to regain back some public confidence having worked with many police forces over the last 30 years i have nothing but the highest regard for the police and the difficult tasks that they do underwater search in particular is extremely difficult and specialist work however I will not let my unblemished reputation be damaged any further by allowing this investigation to inaccurately report my involvement. These very important findings are to answer two of the key questions outstanding in this case. Where was Nicola and why was she not found? The answers are now clear. For the most part, Nicola was in the non-tidal part of the river, approximately 75 metres downstream from the bench. She was not found initially by the Northwest Underwater Search Unit by divers or their sonar 
and then missed again when they investigated my target. No targets were located during our search. In my vast experience, we have never recovered that a body that has floated after drowning. Our data shows that a drowning victim sinks either straight away or drifts a short distance while struggling until they drown. There is no exact science for how long it takes to, for a body to decompose and then float to the surface. It can be days or weeks, depending on a number of factors. But when they do surface, they move with the flow of the river. In this case, over the weir, and probably during the night into the tide, not into the tidal section of the river wire. At this point, I do not know what your conclusions are or what will be published in the report. However, for the avoidance of any doubt, I'm enclosing further sonar images that were gathered at 16.30 hours, 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the 7th of February, 2023. These images clearly show the body of Nicola laying in a fetal position on the riverbed. For ease, I've outlined the body in blue. Mm. Furthermore, the target measures 1.6 metres in total length, the same height as Nicola. The best and clearest views can be seen via my sonar imaging data, which shows the live imaging. I have offered to show this several times, but even so, these attached images are clear enough even for someone with no sonar competence or training to understand. These images and the resulting implications will be disturbing and upsetting for the family and friends of Nicola. It is important for not only the police to see them, but for them to be sensitively shared with the family before your report is published, and I strongly implore you to do this. Consider this. I am keen to work with you to ensure that the report is transparent. That was a strange thing to say, wasn't he? Saying this is going to be upsetting for the family. Uh, you should. Sh Let's have a listen to that again. On the bench, with GPS fluctuation of plus and minus five meters, plus one meter of towfish layback. Therefore. This evidence cannot have been properly considered and will leave your report open to obvious criticism until they drown. There is no exact science for how long it takes to, for a body to decompose and then float to the surface. It can be days or weeks, depending on a number of factors. But when they do surface, they move with the flow of the river. In this case, over the weir and probably during the night, into the tide, not into the tidal section of the river wire. At this point, I do not know what your conclusions are or what will be published in the report. However, for the avoidance of any doubt, I'm enclosing further sonar images that were gathered at 16.30 hours, 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the 7th of February, 2023. These images clearly show the body of Nicola laying in a fetal position on the riverbed. For ease, I've outlined the body in blue. Furthermore, the target measures 1.6 metres in total length, the same height as Nicola. The best and clearest views can be seen via my sonar imaging data, which shows the live imaging. I have offered to show this several times, but even so, these attached images are clear enough even for someone with no sonar competence or training to understand. These images and the resulting implications will be disturbing and upsetting for the family and friends of Nicola. It is important for not only the police to see them, but for them to be sensitively shared with the family before your report is published. And I strongly implore you. Yeah, so he's asking them to share these images sensitively with the family. But remember, the fam, you know, Peter's always trying to tell everybody what to do. The family didn't want to get involved in this. Uh, review the the police report said that right from the beginning the family declined did not want to you know again who is the family we don't know but they said they did not want to be involved in it now he's telling everybody he's like the boss of everything trying to tell everybody what they should do you to do this consider this i'm keen to work with you to ensure that the report is transparent and accurate rather than pitching partners against each other very publicly and so on 
And I wonder, did, has he approached the family? Because really, before he started showing all these images around, he should have, you know, he's got a contact with the family. He's had contact with them anyway. Have they cut him off completely? Because really, the right thing to do before he told anybody else would to be come to contact the family and say, look, I'm going to, you know, stop them getting the shock that i mean you know that was a shock to all of us who've been invested in the case imagine how that was for nicola's family to hear all that i think it's awful you know so whether he did try and contact them but they just have cut him off so they didn't reply i don't know but um you know it's like it's like where do people get off thinking they're the boss of telling everybody else what to do what to think what to watch what to spend their money on what to do you know these just you know do what you want to do but he's just there saying it's all because nobody thought he was important enough to be involved that's how it feels peter come on you know, you've got to see that. You've got to get your head out of your own backside and see that there are more things at play here than just, you know, your reputation. I'm asking you take time to review the evidence I provided. That said, once the report is released, I will be making my own media statement with the information that I provided to you. I have enormous public... And he did make a statement, and I have done a video on that. Uh, we looked through the Peter Folding statement. Um, you know, fair enough, he's got a right to make his opinion felt, but he can't tell other people what to think. That's what I think he's got to, you know, he can say what is his truth, if you like, uh, and the police will say what they say is their truth. Everybody will have their own thoughts on one thing or another, but you can't make people think a, a certain way. And that's how I've felt over since this all came out, is if you even question he, uh, anything that he says, it's like you're a troll. or you're, It's not a troll to question something. That's not being a troll. Being a troll is to be nasty, you know, to actually go on and attack somebody questioning what somebody says is not being a troll support for myself and my team led by many families of victims that i've helped over many years and my decades of unblemished work speaks for itself it's my hope that our positions will be unilateral the truth will be told and the public opinion confidence and trust will be begin to be restored yours sincerely peter foley now that lets you know, interesting because it's supposed to be going to go to the government now we know i think uh we saw that uh, you know i i did mention it in the video andrew snowden is very well in with rishi sunak you know he's a conservative mp he was invited for christmas drinks to 10 downing street so it'd be interesting to see how this goes down at number 10 you know, and of course, now there's war going on and this, that and the other. And Rishi Sunak's, you know, will he even want to get involved in it? Will James Cleverly want to get involved in it? Or will they see it as an opportunity? You know, are they really going to go against the police? Um, be interesting, won't it, to see what happens? So he says he's done that, I think, already. He says on his Facebook. So uh, I think he does say that. We'll have a look in a minute. Thank well you. said, mate. Thank well you. said. Thank you. So I sent that letter. They then published the report. They said they went to an expert at Cranfield University. And he's he said, bear with me, he said, which is quite unbelievable, actually. Um, just before you read that, can I get a thumbs up in the chat for that, that letter that Peter just read, please? Lots of thumbs up there because that was that was that was quite thumbs up for that letter. <laughs> right, okay. Now notice now, Peter, he doesn't like being poo-pooed as this leading expert. He's now gonna poo-poo a leading expert. Uh so he's obviously not as leading an expert as he is. Quite a letter that. Quite yeah. a letter. No, I, I obviously spent, this has taken a lot of my life up this, and I, yeah. I, I, can, I can tell you now, 
I will not give up on this. I am determined, firstly, for this family, and I am not going to have my name, good name tarnished in this country. All the good work that we, we have done, unblemished career, and I've been stabbed and try over the last few months people trying to discredit me it will not happen you've picked on the wrong person because i'm gonna i will take you to the cleaners eventually okay and, uh -huh. this will, and the truth will come out so i want to say this so this is when the target went to the um um this is a letter this is the public report it's all open um right let me just go back one, 105. Here we go. Loads of love in the chat, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so this is the diver. The diver went in. Um, so it said the dive team, this is the report, and you can see it online. Um, uh, bu -bu -bu. The dive team was later contacted by the review team regarding this find and also confirmed that a dive had taken place on the 7th of February following the sonar imagery presented by Mr. Folding and SGI. The dive team worked from the GPS coordinates provided by them. Bearing in mind, that's fluctuation as well. The dive team, um, uh, by then, along with a marker that they placed on the bank. Now, that marker is just the centre. So it could be in anywhere seven metres either side. This location was close to the bench where Nicola had left her phone, where you would expect to find her, and some distance from where she was found. The diver who undertook this dive was able to confirm that the dive took place at 13.21, and the find was found to be tree branches underwater. Now, originally, we were told it was nothing. Yeah. Now it's tree branches. Therefore, cleared as negative. It is relevant also to add that the same area had been previously searched by the Northwest Underwater Search Unit using sonar on the 28th and 31st, sonar equipment and dive methods. This had also proved negative. The diver stated, this is not mine, this is the underwater. I'm actually 100% sure that there was no body in that part of the water at any time. It's not very often I dive in such an unobstructed, unobstructed body of water with such a flat bottom and, and with good visibility. Now, in the report... Yeah, so that, that's what the divers said there, that it was clear, flat bottom, clear visibility, etc. They said the diving conditions were very dear. It wasn't clear. It was quite murky when we were there, so it wasn't clear visibility. Um, the diver provided their own record of this dive to the review team, the coordinates of the images that they record exactly of those. Now, why, firstly, did the dive team not say, we previously found this, and on our sonar, we found it was to be nothing? Yeah. So they clearly um, didn't find anything on their sonar. Now, to supplement this and to provide to independent review, the review team contacted a leading government sonar specialist for their opinion now what you've got a bit and this is what i want to make it very clear leading government sonar specialists fine i don't know of anybody personally <clears throat> but um who finds bodies but i yeah so it just straight away like uh kicks that off the field doesn't it i don't know of anybody personally who finds bodies so uh he is poo-pooing this expert before he even says what they said there was one years ago but they've done a bit um so they've never even looked at my computer to actually see the data. So all they've had is a screenshot printed on a piece of paper. Yeah. So you can't tell. So he said uh, that they said low confidence in the images that were of a human casualty. This was the first expert. Now, the first one was only a sonar shadow. If they'd seen the proper body, they would have gone, that's a body. Even a child could look at it. Uh, Mr. Folding later contacted the review team on the 26th. He says even a child could look at it, but Peter, you didn't see it for a long time, did you? What the letter I've just read to you, to yeah. provide additional expert and independent opinion, uh, were assessed by a lecturer at Cranfield University. Now, I don't know any lecturers who look for bodies in water on sonar. The target cannot be positive. Now, bearing in mind, these people have not been named. They're faceless and they're, they've got, they, I don't know who they are. The target cannot be positively identified. Fair enough. They should be identified. Which expert is it? And, you know, what's his expertise? I agree with Peter there. So um, they've not identified them. Probably Peter would be right down there, give him a... a 
<laughs> Give him a good telling off if he knew who they were. But he's right, he should know who they are. Who is this expert? I mean, it could have been Debbie Davies. Identified as a human body based on the data presented. No, of course you can't, without actually seeing the proper stuff. In my opinion, this target would be classed as a low probability of confidence for human remains. I would recommend the target be inspected by divers. Well, it's a bit late for that. Uh, the, re the, 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 you know, the review concluded that this find was sufficiently investigated. This was not investigated because they've not even seen the data. Now, when I go to the United States, I will show the date. He's getting quite snarky now, isn't he? Now, now just to tell you, he's been to the United States. He went, he's been promoting his book in the United States. I think he was at the Crime Con as well. So, you know, he has been to the United States, but he hasn't come up with anything yet. See what I said? He's going to do it in the new year. So I will bring that back. And um, I'm just letting everybody know, which you'd be pleased to know, that this file is going to be sent now to the Home Secretary in the new year and the Prime Minister. Great news. And I will not let this one go. Believe me, I will not let this one go. They will receive the whole file and they they will be it will be copied into other senior people as well. So this does, will get looked at and we will finally get the truth out there, what's going on here. Let's hope so. OK, I want to make that very clear. So I'm working on that now. Um, and I'm working with on a very senior with a former senior officer on this. Um, I've got so much public support on this. We can't let this go. You okay, certainly so, have. I'm looking at the chat. And you certainly yeah. have. So they ba uh, they basically said, you know, it's nothing. I mean, but I want to clarify here. It's nothing. That's what they're saying. But they haven't even looked at the computer. So if I said to Lancashire Police tomorrow, I want to meet you in a room. I want to have the media there. Not for not for TV, by the way, not for TV um, projection, but witnessed by by the media, witnessed by Lancashire Police, Crime Commissioner, Mr. Snowden. Let's hope he gets all these wishes. The head of the College of Policing, I, I can assure you they probably wouldn't turn up <laughs> because it would be embarrassing. Because if I show the images, anybody can see that it is it is without a doubt a body. Mm -hmm. okay. So carry on, Luke. Sorry, I, I needed to get that in now. It's quite important, I think. So that's good. I think the last thing that you need to do right now with what you've just said is apologise. A lot of people needed that. A lot of people wanted to hear that. And yeah. it was a very eloquent, very eloquent letter. And well said. Thumbs up on the video. I want to get this to a thousand thumbs up. Can I just end. use the bathroom a second, please? Right, so I think we'll leave it there. We're, um, that's been quite a long uh, stretch. There's still there's still two hours left to go of this video, so I think it's going to be there's going to be at least two more parts, isn't there, to this? But anyway, so yeah, as always, let me know what you think in comments. So things that I do feel for Peter about, and I do feel, you know, hopefully if um, he's, I think he's sent these things now, hasn't he, to the, let's so just have a check, because I think on Facebook, I'm pretty certain he's posted um, that he has sent, if he hasn't actually, no, I don't think he's knocked me off Facebook, probably doesn't realise who I am on there. Thought he put thing up on Facebook. No, it's still about his books. Oh, so the James English show he did was in July. Um, no, it's not mentioning anything about it on there. Could be. It. I thought he had said something. Yeah, so his book went for sale on the 14th of November 2023. And he went, he did go over to America. So I don't know why I didn't sort out his images then. Now, yeah, anyway, I'll look next time and we'll see what he has to say on his Twitter. I can't get it on the computer here, but I can get it on my phone. Uh, and I, I, I'm pretty certain that he has said that he has sent these 
that he has got in contact with the Prime Minister and the um, and James Cleverly. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's watch this space, isn't it? So anyway, that was part two of the interview, the question and answer interview. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I know a lot of you were very disappointed that you didn't get a chance to actually see it before it was taken down. Um, so I, I hope you realise that I'm not trying to dish Peter. I'm just trying to work out what is the truth. What is the truth? Who is telling the truth? You know, Peter has done some fantastic things. But then I just, just don't understand his behaviour at the moment, not only with the police, but just in general with his social media and the psychic. And, you know, it just just beggars belief for me that a professional man like Peter has done all those things. Anyway, I'll be back for, uh, blah, 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 back for part three. Remember to live and love very wisely, very carefully. I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God always go with you. Thank you for watching. Bye.